Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here. And as you can see from the monitors behind me, 2019's only blooming dying, isn't it? Yes, 2020 is on the horizon. It's just around the corner. It's coming up soon. It's it's happening. It's it's the next year after 2019, so we need to talk about what Switch stuff's gonna happen then. Unfortunately, we don't actually know everything that's going to happen in the future. Despite my protests, it was still, still not possible. So instead, I'm going to be predicting things. It's, it's a wholly original uh, video idea concept that's never been done by anyone before. And uh, definitely not, not even, not even us. I've written down all my predictions because otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> and they're in kind of an order, which is fine and everything. But I think it'll be more fun if I randomize it, which I'm going to do now. Therefore, it'll be in a nonsensical order and that will be more fun, I thought, in my head. I'm also going to be ranking all of these. Not ranking them, but like rating them for how likely I think they are. Because some of them are pretty damn unlikely. <laughs> but anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Okay, so the, <laughs> the first one on the list is... Super Mario something. Yeah, I reckon in 2020 we're gonna get a new Mario game of some description, or at least some sort of re-release or remake. Basically, I mean, like, it's been, what, like, uh, three years since the last new Mario game on the Switch, Odyssey? Or at least it will be by the time it comes to 2020. It's been, like, two years by now, but... Uh, that's too damn long. We need more Mario, and we need it. <laughs> in 2020. And uh, also we did get that picture, that picture of Mario eating a watermelon and he had the two little things on his cheek which I'm still 100% certain is concrete information of something. So I'm gonna rate this one as... Nah, I'm just gonna put a graphic on the screen. Next up, something new from House House. And if you don't know who House House are, are they're the developers developers of an untitled... <laughs> they're the developers of Untitled Goose Game. What are we going to get from them? I don't know. It could be a brand new project, although to be honest, I think the most likely thing is a DLC for Untitled Goose Game, because that would be one hell of an easy slam dunk. Like, just, just DLC, more goose in some other part of the village. There's so many other parts of the village that you couldn't go to. Ah, easy. Do it. Next up, an another Pokemon game, because they're starting to do them yearly. <laughs> and this is an easy prediction. It's an easy way to say, yeah, Alex was right. As for what kind of Pokemon game, I really don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine it's going to be a brand new one or, you know, like, what, what are we on now? I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, dear. I've only made about 15 million videos about it. Sword and Shield. So I don't think we're going to get, like, Mega Sword and large shield. I think it's a bit early for that. They generally do that two years after, or at least they have done with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, I could be wrong again, but to be honest, I think what we're looking at most likely is a remake. A lot of people have been saying Diamond and Pearl, and people have been saying there are rumors going around, and well, I can I can literally start a rumor here. Guess what, guys? Did, did you hear? Did you hear? Pokemon, Pokemon uh, Red and Blue. N new remakes. <laughs> Um, but this time you play as Gary. Look, done. That's a rumor. In all seriousness, I think it's most likely going to be like, let's go Pikachu and EV2 or Johto. You know, it's going to be gold and silver, but let's go, honestly. I think that's the easiest thing for them to do because they've already got the engine and everything. And, you know, they've already got some sprucing up that they've done with Sword and Shield that they can inject into these games as well. I'm not talking like Wild Area or anything because it's still just a remake. But I do think that there's a couple of bits they can throw in. And yeah, Let's Go did really, really, really well for them, so... Huh. Okay, this this one's more out there. I... yeah. ARMS 2, baby! I think a fair few people have forgotten about ARMS, or at least don't think about it daily like I do. And it really doesn't deserve it, and I'm not just saying like, Oh, it's a great game, it's, uh, it's underappreciated, blah blah blah, all that hipster stuff. The game sold like hotcakes. It sold really, really well, especially for a brand new Nintendo IP. They traditionally don't, eh, don't do amazingly, you know, things like uh, Codename Steam and stuff like that. They just kind of, eh, not only my own gut feelings, but also the, uh, the director. I did some research. I, I actually did some research. It's a Christmas miracle. The director of the game, Kenta Sato, has basically done very little overall since he uh, directed ARMS. He's done little bits here and there. Obviously, I don't know exactly how much he's been working on these other games. 
but he's generally just been sort of like additional credits and things like that and additional staff. He doesn't really seem to have been helming anything. Well, he, I mean, he hasn't. Breath of the Wild 2 something. I've seen a fair few people say things like, oh, it, it's going to come out in 2020. And I, I, I must admit, I thought that for a while myself, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought the likelihood of it actually coming out in 2020 is pretty slim. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love it to death if it did come out in 2020, but this is my predictions video, and my predictions say... <laughs> Wait. Which is a shame, but I do think we're going to see something about it. Maybe something minor, maybe even just like, you know, uh, Al Numa or someone just playing the game for a bit, maybe? Just show us anything, please! <laughs> Ring Fit Adventure version 2.0. It's all first party stuff so far. This one isn't, isn't enormously interesting, but yeah, Ring Fit Adventure. I, I love that game. I genuinely, I'm still playing it. I'm, I, I mean, I've not been playing it as much as I should do. But the game has been a real success, especially in Japan. It's been absolutely blowing up. People are, you know, shelves just out of the game everywhere. And maybe it was understocked or something. I don't know. I mean, it's a bit bigger. Well, it's a lot bigger, in fact. So maybe they couldn't have too much space on there. I don't know. But this is not an unpopular game by any stretch of the imagination. This game is big. It's big, baby. It's a big baby. And so I think we're going to get some sort of semi-major update for it, like a version 2.0 that has some new exercises and stuff and maybe some other features. There's not a lot else to say because <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna do. New Fighter Pass announced for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate because yeah, we've got we've got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We've got the, the fifth person who, we, who still hasn't been announced, the final, the final Fighter Pass fighter. And I was rather hoping the Game Awards would give me something. That's why I didn't record this until Friday. What a boob I was. The DLC has been massively successful, like phenomenally successful. And the fighters have all been absolutely fantastic. You know, I mean, maybe some of the characters I'm not like, oh, wetting my pants over. But even so, you know, like they included Banjo-Kazooie. They can do whatever the hell they like for the rest of my life. And I will just love them so hard. <laughs> Bayonetta 3, please. This one's not quite as interesting. Another free Kirby game, because they've been they've already done one of them. They did loads on the 3DS. They've got the engine. They could probably churn out a couple more, couldn't they? That's not interesting, but it's a prediction. Oh, this one's not not so likely anymore. <laughs> I'm uh, new new hardware of some description. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking like a Switch Pro or anything. I'm not talking about, you know, some sort of upgraded console or anything like that, or a new version of the light or whatever. But I'm just thinking, I've just got a tingly feeling in the end of my fingertips that says we're going to get something new hardware and I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards something like a, a Joy-Con Pro. I mean, I, I thought, I wrote down in my notes, I wrote Pro-Con. But that's, that's, that's like 50% of Pro Controller, so I hope they wouldn't do that. New ProCon? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea what they could be doing if they even do that. But as I say, I've, I've just got a feeling, and this is my video about predictions. I'm predicting, and I predict that. Maybe, maybe a Pro Controller revision, that'd be cool. With, um, things. Fire Emblem Three Houses DLC. I think I wrote this down when I was struggling for ideas first. They might do it. <laughs> Super Mario Maker 2 version 3.0. I had to emphasize the 2 because I didn't write it down in my notes and I didn't want to write, I didn't want to say Super Mario Maker 3. I don't know whether it was just because of the way that I was uh, introduced to it and everything, but uh, obviously uh, if you didn't see the video, I did actually get to play the version 2.0 of Super Mario Maker 2 um, before it was actually released. And I just, I kind of got the feeling when I was there and maybe, maybe it was just, maybe it was just exactly what was shown to me. It all felt a little bit incomplete for a version 2.0 so i i suspect and this is nothing more than suspicion and is based on nothing but similar tingly fingertip feelings that there was gonna be version 2.0 and it got split for whatever reason basically um, maybe so that the nintendo actually released something towards the end of the year i i really don't know but it i just uh, 
I just have a feeling that maybe it was a larger update, given that they were giving it the big 2.0 moniker, and they kind of split it up a little bit. Could be entirely wrong about that, but I'm, I'm guessing we'll get version 3.0 this year. Regardless, because it, why not? Little bit of a sad one. I think Doom Eternal for the Switch is going to be not so much delayed, but it's going to come out quite a bit later than the others. I'm guessing Q3, and it makes me a sad boy. Given that the game was delayed for all systems, away from like an end of year release, a Christmas release, which is a big deal. Unsurprisingly, it's Christmas. It's the it, it's the biggest time of the year to sell things. There must have been something really, really crucial in there that they really, really had to get right for whatever reason, whether it was a, you know, game breaking issues or whether they wanted to introduce something brand new or something went a lot wrong along the way. I don't know. But all I know is that they, they took a big old blooming decision from a financial point of view. And they also said that the Switch version is just, it's coming sometime. I, I can't help but feel that maybe they wanted to get it fixed as soon as possible. And the Switch version is probably like their lowest priority if they're not giving it the same blooming release date as Animal Crossing. So I'm actually sat here wondering whether the Switch version is still even being developed for actively at the moment. I'm not saying they've cancelled it at all, but I'm guessing maybe they've just sort of, they've drawn as many teams as they can to work on the, the primary version before they work on the ported version to make sure that that goes out and it is properly released on the 3rd of March. I really hope that's the date because I didn't look it up. And I've got the feeling the Switch version may just, you know, be a low priority, fallen by the wayside. So it, it's going to be quite a bit later. I, I, don't, I don't like this prediction. Something nicer, Metroid Prime Trilogy. Just bloody release it, Nintendo. Everyone knows it exists. Everyone's seen it. I mean, we haven't, but we really want it to exist. It's just such a natural fit. I mean, everyone knows it. You know, it's a natural fit. Just do it, Nintendo. Stop mucking around. I honestly randomized this. Uh, I don't think we're going to see any Metroid Prime 4 in 2020. Like at all. I mean, maybe we might get some sort of like development update, like uh, someone at Retro is just sat there in a chair saying, hey guys, we're working on Metroid Prime 4. Thanks for being patient. It's gonna be a tasty little number. But beyond that, I, I really can't see anything, to be honest, because the game restarted development. And as great as Retro are, I don't think they're gonna show anything prematurely. And I just, I just don't think they've got even that much to show, maybe. Uh, I know some people have been saying they want Metroid Prime 4 to release in 2020. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be wrong, and it does release in 2020, but I just don't see it happening. <laughs> Diablo 4. Didn't even know this existed until I wrote this list. Ah, I'm up to date with the games. The fact that Diablo 3 came out on the Switch, and it's kind of a top-down dungeon crawler, you know, not terribly, you know, hardcore on a system CPU or anything like that. I can see them easily porting this to Switch in 2020. Maybe, maybe, maybe not quite 2020, but we'll maybe even get the announcement and then it'll come out 2021 or something like that. Or maybe it will come out in 2020. Either way, I can't help but see that Diablo 4 will be coming to Switch just because why the hell wouldn't you? Switch is one of the biggest platforms right now and it's portable. People like that. <laughs> In a very similar vein, I think Hollow Knight Silk Song will have something mentioned about it in 2020, but it'll come out in 2021. Team Cherry are a lovely, lovely developer and have produced Hollow Knight, which is, I think, honestly, arguably one of the finest pieces of games and one of the best examples of games as art without going too far down the sort of the aesthetic route. It is still functionally I think an absolutely phenomenal game with a beautiful art style as well. Like, it's the whole package, baby. Just buy it. But they are notorious for delaying games because they want to get everything so blooming right you, you, your grandmother could weep. So, unless I'm very much mistaken, I don't see Silk Song coming out until 2021, but I do think that we're going to get some sort of official confirmation in 2020, even if it is just 2021. But yeah, again, love to be wrong. Love for it to come out now. Uh, no, no, no Labo. No Labo. I think, I think Labo's um, gone, to be honest. I really like Labo for what it is, but at the same time, I, you know, I got it and I enjoyed it. 
and then it went in a cupboard and I forgot about it. And even the VR one, and I thought the VR one would maybe have more legs and Nintendo were like, hey, get the VR kit, you know, because you can, you can whoosh and you can do it in Smash Bros and stuff like that. But none of the VR modes in any of the games that they have, you know, released, like in uh, Super Mario Odyssey and Smash Bros and stuff like that, nothing's really been like, wow, that's really cool. It's always kind of, oh, Okay, which is a shame. I mean, it's it's a good concept, uh, but I just I just think Labo, whilst it may well have been profitable from what I've heard, maybe just didn't catch a light as many people thought it would. Uh, yeah, I just can't see them putting any more you know time and effort into R and D for it because it must require quite a lot of R and D. Yeah, just I just I just think we've seen the end of Labo, which is kind of a shame, but at the same time. I don't think about it often. <laughs> Kerbal, Kerbal Space Program 2. <laughs> if you didn't know, back in the day, Kerbal Space Program, the first one, was originally going to come out on the Wii U as well. Like, the, the devs were like, yeah, we're bringing it out on the Wii U, and then that was the last anyone ever heard of it, as far as I remember. It was just like, yeah, it's coming, and then deathly silence for the rest of the Wii U's life, and then and then nothing. Kerbal Space Program's a cool game. I, I haven't played the second one. I played the first one, really enjoyed it. But yeah, the, the second one, the Switch is like the biggest indie machine ever. Why the hell wouldn't they release it on there? I don't know why this came to mind of all, of all the indie games. It just did. Also, Stanley Parable, but we know that's coming in 2020. I found that out a few, like a week ago. It was announced over a year ago. I felt like a right tool. The 20th item on this list is the first one I wrote down. Animal Crossing Direct in January or February. There's still an absolute mess of stuff we just flat out don't know about the game. Like, can you still create custom outfits? And the answer I hope is a resounding yes. But then how far can we take it? We've already seen some villagers have short sleeves, some have long sleeves and like coats and stuff like there, there's so much we don't know even if it's only fine details there's so much we don't know we need to be bloody told and i i assume we will before the game comes out but it comes out on the 3rd of march can you see why i made the prediction january or february sounds accurate it's just not you know i reckon we'll see another game like cadence of i rule but with a different Nintendo franchise, I hope Metroid. Nintendo took a hell of a gamble with letting just an indie developer not not just, you know, create a new game for them because they've, they've done it with other studios like they've had Ninja 3 do Metroid and stuff like that. <coughs> and even people like Capcom do stuff like the Minish Cap and the Oracle games. So Nintendo do lease, lease out they're, 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 I'm doing well today. They do let other developers make games in the same series, so it's not unheard of, but they still took a big gamble with what, what is essentially just a really a very small indie developer who created Cadence of Hyrule. That was a, that was a big deal. And I think they're ready to do it again because the result was brilliant. As I said, I'm hoping it's Metroid because I think Metroid also fits with smaller games quite well, you know, sort of 2D and everything. So yeah, I can see some sort of crazy mashup style game with Metroid, hopefully. Ah. And lastly, um, <laughs> yeah, I mm, kind of the best one to end it on. I reckon we're going to get a Halo game. This one's way less likely. I think it's more of a hope and a dream than an actual prediction, truth be told. But some sort of Halo game, even if it's just Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition, that's a fun one to say, on the Nintendo Switch, would be an enormous deal. Like, massive. And we know it'll be able to run because it was a 360 game, baby. Microsoft and Nintendo are becoming very buddy-buddy lately with things like Cuphead and Ori and the Blind Forest and stuff like that. So I really wouldn't be surprised if something as, I don't want to say unimportant, but unimportant at least in a modern sense as Halo Combat Evolved got a re-release on Switch, the anniversary edition. Yeah. It's not a big deal to release that on Xbox One or indeed Xbox Series X. What kind of a name is that for a tall GameCube? But to release the first Halo game on a portable system? one of the biggest systems and, you know, flat out not a Microsoft product, that would be 
bloody enormous. Imagine the fan response, you know, sort of, oh, we can play Halo and yeah, we could do all this and it's on the Switch and everything. It would be amazing. And I love me some Halo. I've always had a soft spot for it. Whilst I don't think it is especially likely, I do think if it did happen, it would be absolutely phenomenal and massive. And everyone would say, well done. And then you get some people say, release it on PS4. Not understanding the world. And there you have it. Those are my and my alone Switch predictions for 2020. It's not just games, but also some other little wobbly bits too. I hope you enjoy my wobbly bits. But I'm very keen to see what you think is going to happen in the year of 2020, so let us know what you think down there in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you make my predictions for the Switch's year in 2020 come true by clicking that subscribe button. That's, that's how it works, trust me. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,